live from New York, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS Global Summit 2019. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Welcome back. We're here in New York City at AWS Summit, one of the regional summits, over 10,000 people in attendance. I'm Stu Miniman. My co-host is Corey Quinn, and happy to welcome Slalom to the program for the first time. So, Slalom, like Amazon themselves, is based in Seattle, yet also has a presence here in New York City. And representing that, uh, to my right, uh, we have Parul Patel, who's the manager director of Middle Market for Slalom, based here in mm -hmm. New York City. Uh, World right. Trade Center, I believe, uh, where your office that's is. That's right. Uh, that, that's excellent. And Joe Berg is the managing director uh, with Slalom uh, based out of Seattle. So thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you. All right, so uh, I, I did walk by the booth this morning. You know, build as a service is uh, uh, you know, the, the big takeaway I have. But Joe, for our audience that might not be familiar with Slalom, you know, give us the bumper sticker. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, the way we like to tell the story is, you know, Slalom is a modern consulting company focused on strategy, technology, and business transformation. As a part of the technology work that uh, we've been doing for clients over the last couple decades, we, we started to see a shift in that, really with the advent of, of cloud and companies like AWS, really changing the technology landscape and, and what was really possible. And so, you mentioned the build as a service tag. Like, that's, that's really what uh, the operating model that we built to serve those customers at the scale and at the, uh, at the velocity that they're starting to execute on their most mission critical digital initiatives today. And so build as a service is really how we dig in and leverage platforms like AWS uh, and, and provide value for customers. All right, so Pearl, one of the things we like about these regional summits is it's not just a little bit rinse and repeat when you go to the environments, but right. they do speak to uh, you know, the local market. So you know, when you look at the, you know, the, the, some of the customers in the keynotes, like, oh well, you expect to see some financial services being right. here in New York City. Uh, you start up like DoorDash, you know, where, where, where they were here. Uh, give us your viewpoint, you know, what, what, what is special or unique about kind of the, the greater uh, you know, metropolitan region here in New York City uh, that, that, that you see with your customers? Sure, so I think um, as we think about New York as a market, Market. A lot of industries, a lot of companies that are based here, um, certainly financial services, one of the big ones, but the buzz in the market is all about cloud. What are we going to do? How are we going to get into the cloud? Um, the question we like to ask our customers is why? Why do you want to be in the cloud? And what we're seeing, especially in like financial services, is a lot of innovation. And so as we think about what Joe does from a build as a service perspective, um, our clients, we have a client in financial services who they wanted to figure out how do we generate more revenue. And um, so we built them with our build as a service capability, an AWS platform that helped them bring data together and figure out how to monetize that data across different business units and innovate. And so I think it's things like that, that when we ask that question of why, um, we can leverage cloud to really do that transformation. Yeah, uh, that's, that, that's great. You know, we, we always talk about, you know, IT uh, can't be the organization of no. Um, or right. uh, as a friend of mine, Alan Cohen said, there's the triangle of no and slow, and we need to move up to the top, which is go. Right. So how, how does cloud help with uh, you know, that, that move forward? You know, I love the story you talk about, you know, you know, how do I monetize data? How do I move that forward? There, there's been that promise of that, but how do I turn it from you know, a lofty goal to uh, you know, actual reality? Yeah. Maybe Joe, I'll let you answer that with a little bit of how we bring it to life with our build as a service. Yeah, I mean, honestly, we look at cloud as, it's not just an enabler of, of business today, it's almost fueling business today. And the, and the reality is, is the customer and consumer demand out there for digital experiences is, is exponentially growing, right? Organizations are trying to transform themselves into these modern technology companies. Doesn't matter what industry, financial right. services, or otherwise, they're really trying to transform themselves. And cloud is really allowing them to get out of the procurement game, out of the infrastructure game, out of the data center game, and really start to lean into, how do I just make use of this in a meaningful way that's going to translate into those revenue streams that Peru will talk about? Yeah, it, it's deceptively complex, uh, sorry, deceptively simple, I suppose, to take a look at what cloud represents, of, okay, now whatever you want, instead of buying it, waiting six weeks just to show up if you're lucky, and then racking it, right. suddenly it's an API call away. I mean, that, the technology piece is interesting, but how does that impact the cultural change, the processes, yeah. uh, the governance story about it, the cost control, speaking as a cloud economist, how, how do you find that this is revolutionizing these companies as they are 
migrating into this brave new world and transforming. Yeah. When I think about um, cloud, so to me it isn't a technology play at all across the business, it's about changing your business um, that starts with changing your mindset. So being in the cloud and leveraging cloud is about how do I do things different? Um, and that means I'm looking at my fundamental operating model, I'm looking at who my customers are, and then changing the mindset of my people, and culturally, we're going to become faster, we're going to iterate a lot more, and having things like cloud, which I can spin up instances at, a, um, you know, at the click of a button, makes it easier for me to do that, but it comes with, I've got to think about um, my people, right, and I always tell our clients, explain to your people why this is important to them and why it's important to the business, um, because they're going to be able to um, learn new skills, they're going to be able to do more and, um, and become more marketable out there. And so to me, it's, it's a company transformation, not necessarily a technology play at all. Yeah, and I'll just maybe piggyback on the back of that. You know, when you take your strategy and you start to think about translating how we're going to do things in a digital business environment, and you start to think about the demands that that consumer base has on how fast you release features, how quickly you are procuring new experiences for them. Um, it is absolutely about an operating model that can translate strategy into initiative and uh, budgeting planning into execution very quickly. It's also then about when they move into the actual execution. IT organizations were not built to build technology products. They were there to build technology projects and the confluence of those events of this becoming mission critical and part of their external facing strategy has really required that transformation and cultural shift as well in terms of how do we build things very fastly and quickly, right. get them out to market in an iterative way that has impact and benefit and value to the consumer. And I think that is the holistic complexity that, that organizations are dealing with with something that is making technology very simple, but the actual then motion of getting that technology to be useful is complex. Yeah, and it becomes very challenging to get to a point of people who are used to the old way of doing things, they're seeing the skill sets that's required continue to evolve, and it's very challenging for a large scale company to say, okay, I'm going to go out this week and hire 2,000 new people who are all up to speed on a cloud yeah. provider. That's something that's almost impossible for people to do. So there has to be a bridge, there has to be a story that isn't, well, we're going to replace you with a younger version. There right. has to be something that opens a door and a way to get there. And doing that both culturally and on an individual level seems like it's something a lot of companies are struggling with right now. Is that something you're seeing in your customer base? I mean, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I just, uh, I love that question because it really, it, it, it gives me an invitation to talk about build as a service. That's right. Yeah. And build as a service, uh, you know, we're playing on the as a service language that companies like AWS establish, right? And the idea about build as a service is it's instantly available. You've got idea, you need to go start executing quickly. Maybe competitor A has already built an experience out there that is surpassing you in the marketplace. You don't have time to think about how do I pull all these things together? How do I upskill my, my resources in terms of uh, uh, skill sets and capabilities uh, to then get to the point where I can execute? I need to do that now, but I'm also on this journey of transforming my internal culture and my people and my skill sets. So how do I get a, a, a jump start in that? We have built a model to help our customers instantly tap into that in these uh, multidisciplinary teams that really holistically are bringing solution to customer. But we're also doing this in, in what we call a co-creation model. How do we help them learn uh, and adopt those same principles that are going to help them build uh, modern technology, software, and products uh, uh, when we're gone and they're becoming self-dependent. And I think that is part of the journey of how you can leverage a company like Song. Well, and, and that's what I would add, Joe, is um, as we think about our, our offering, it is about getting to velocity in the software engineering space, in the cloud, but this co-creation concept, I think, is one that we've heard from our clients that not a lot of pe people do, right? It's easy for, um, for partners to come in and say, here, we'll just do it for you, and our model is we want to do it with you to the point where when you have an agile team, we've got a mixed team of solemn team members and client team members where we're helping the, the client team members learn along the way because these are all new technologies that are evolving so fast 
that it's hard to keep up for anyone. Yeah, I, I, it gives me hope to hear what you're saying here because you know we all have the, the the scars of listening through. It's like, okay, <laughs> I did a big rollout. Well, how'd it go? Well, you know, it was six to 12 months later than we thought, and right. we all did the corporate mandated training, uh, yet a month later, we're all looking at each other saying, oh my gosh, how do we deal with what we have? Yeah. And of course, you know, it is no longer just, you know, waterfall and throw things over there, it is constantly changing, therefore, you know, co-creation is a term we love, yeah. uh, and, you know, help us walk through, you know, how long is an engagement like this, and yeah, how much is there the ramp up, and then, you know, how do you, you it's as a service, so I'm assuming there is a you know maintenance, and you're staying engaged as uh, you know after we are you know through some of those uh, milestones. Sure, sure. Well, I always kind of start with you know we moved from as I said earlier a project mindset into a product mindset. So each of these we consider its own piece of software, and and product really starts way out here on the ideation side. So Perul talks a lot with customers about the strategy of what new revenue streams you need to be thinking about. How do you engage? Uh, with experiences. Once we move into this, I know what I want to build, now I just don't know how I'm going to get there to the, to the finish line, as you were talking about, Stu. Um, that's really where we enter in with this build as a service model. And we start with a, with a short four to six week discovery phase so that we can start to establish the foundation of what we're going to build together with our customers. That's where co-creation starts, right? What are the priorities? What are the features? How do we do agile together, which is usually a term companies use, but it's not a term they know how to use, uh, uh, or, or a motion they know how to exercise well with. And so how do we establish those things, how we're going to create together? And then we scale into what we would call an MVP release cycle. And our, our whole idea is that we help you get to an MVP, we help you get to minimal viable product, and, that, and then you start to become the owners of those future releases. That's that co-creation piece where we can bring you alongside us, establish culture, actually create business value by actually getting something out the door, and then you start to own it yourself. Depending on the competency and the abilities of the, uh, of the customers we work with, you know, that can vary in terms of when those, those transitions happen. But we look at that as typically anywhere from a, a, a 10 to 14 week exercise to get that first iteration yeah, out, and, and then we start to iterate faster than that. Are most of your customers, are they just dealing with the people that they have in house? Are, are they having to bring in new people to help with that transition along the way? Or is it, yeah, I'm assuming it's a bit of a mix. But. I, I think it is a bit of a mixed bag, and, um, and I think one of the keys, uh, what I like about our philosophy is that we're all about how do we get you working software as quickly as possible. And so while we, you know, we can do a four to six week discovery, we have a client in um, a startup in the healthcare space where we got them through discovery within four weeks. And um, after we do two week sprints, after three sprints, we had software up and running. And, um, and, and so within 10 weeks, we said, here's what you need and in here's some here's some working software that I think um, in a lot of ways people say hey you know we're agile we work fast people typically are not delivering software in 10 weeks and that to me is the differentiator for the way we approach our problems is is we want to get to that working software as fast as possible right, right. at some point it feels almost like agile uh, stopped meaning agility and started meaning uh, we have a lot of meetings every morning that's and right. it's that doesn't work yeah that's right that's, that's a great way to say it yeah yeah. All right, a uh, lot of customers here. Uh, t tell us what are some of the, the top things you're hearing from people, you know, what bring them to your booth? Uh, what, what are some of those things that uh, kind of set off the, oh, this is a good fit for working with Slalom? Sure, yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I, uh, I get asked all the time, you know, what industries do you guys work in? Where, where is this most relevant? Especially when we're talking about build as a service. And, and the reality is, it just slices horizontally right through every industry because I don't know of an industry, whether it be healthcare, financial services, retail, manufacturing, I don't know of one that isn't on that journey. They're at different places on that journey and then the adoption curve, but usually we see them coming like, hey, I, I, I think there's a stat out there that says 80% of the enterprise customers are, have, a, have adopted cloud, but only about 10% of the workloads are on cloud, That's right. right? So they're coming to us with saying, hey, we know we're on this journey of moving to the cloud, but we're stuck. We're stuck in really getting the most value out of the cloud, and how can you help us accelerate the value that we believe is there with a platform like AWS? And, and that's where we're really entering in and finding those, 
really those critical experiences that are going to create value, not only internally in terms of momentum, but externally in terms of their business. Yeah, I, and I would say that, um, that as we think about when companies look at us and why they pick Slalom as an organization to work with, um, I, one of the key differentiators is, is they look, we like to work with people that we enjoy working with. So we're, we truly want to partner with our clients and, um, and so companies say, you know what, we want people that we enjoy working with, uh, we want people that are going to challenge us and be innovative, and that's what you're going to get. When you get Slalom, if you're not looking for someone to, to be innovative and challenge you a little bit, we're probably not the best fit for your company, right? Um, that's just being sure. honest out there. But I, I think the other, the other piece of it is, um, is that we, we want to accelerate your journey and, um, and enable you to do it. So we're not in the business, like while we have long-term capabilities, like as a service, et cetera, um, we're not in the business of taking over your business or being in the outsourcing space. And so our mindset is all about how do we make you better and help you realize your vision. And, um, and I think that's why we work across a lot of different industries and a lot of different types of companies. Joan Pearl, really appreciate you helping, uh, you know, share how you're helping customers through that journey, through greater adoption in the cloud. Thanks for sharing all the updates on Slala. Thanks for having yeah, us. Yeah, thanks for having us. All right, uh, for Take Corey care. Quinn, I'm Stu Miniman. We'll be back here with lots more coverage from AWS Summit in New York City. Thanks for watching theCUBE.